Dr. Wong has a video of him, himself inspecting a clock radio on the bedside table. You can hear it playing Christmas carols. And when he opens it up, it's totally full of pet bugs and their eggs, thousands of them. Uh, bed bugs can, of course, be brought in by visitors. We don't often know how, the, we usually do not know how bed bugs get into a place. Um, and they can even be brought in by various agency staff or home visitors or home health aides uh, as well. The, what's interesting is in the early 2000s, bed bug reports basically doubled every year uh, until about 2011. And since then, it's been pretty constant. It hasn't gone up very much, hasn't gone down very much. And one of our colleagues at the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Michael Levy, uh, did a door-to-door -door survey in South Philadelphia. And he found that 11, over 11% of the residents had had bed bugs in the previous five years. And that's consistent with what we know about New York and Chicago and San Francisco as well. It's still a lot better than, than before World War II, when about a third of Americans had bed bugs at any given time. So I mentioned the difference between an introduction and an infestation. So bed bugs, as I said, travel as pioneers. So usually, it's just one bug. If you're really unlucky, you might have a couple of bugs, or you might have some eggs laid on your, the edge of your shoe or something like that. But usually it's just one or two bugs. And <clears throat> if, it's a female, if it's a male, it doesn't matter, because the male can't reproduce by themselves. Okay? They may bite a couple of times, but you probably won't even notice, and the bug is going to eventually die. If it's an immature bug, same thing. doesn't matter, because even if it becomes a female, there's no male to, to inseminate. So the only problem is, is if it's with one of those mated females, which is unfortunately possible, probable, because that's what they're doing. Um, so, but even then, there's no guarantee that that female is going to become, a, a, that one bug is going to become an infestation. First of all, that female has to survive. She has to find a good place to hide, we call that harborage, and she has to find the host and feed successfully. And that can be complicated, because say I bring a bed bug home, okay? Uh, if it's on my clothes, my clothes are going in the hamper in the closet, which is across the room from my bed. If, the, if it's on my uh, backpack, that's going in the other room, and so then the bug has to find me in bed and get to me, uh, and all before it starves to death. So eventually, assume, assuming that she does that, that she does find the host and feed successfully, which is only about five or ten minutes once or twice a week, she's got to lay her, head, her eggs, and those eggs have to be viable and hatch, and not all eggs hatch. Then that first nymph that comes out there, that little tiny guy, has to find the host, feed, and survive. And the female lays the eggs in different places all around. So one day she may lay three to five eggs over there, and then a few days later, three, two or three or four over there, and a few days after that, someplace else. And so this is one of the challenges with bed bugs, is that there's constant new bugs hatching out in different places. But Again, that little tiny, teeny guy at the size of a period has to find the host and feed. So wherever they're coming out from, they have to find a person sleeping and be able to feed on them. Assuming that happens, that nymph has again to survive to adulthood after all five stages before the a male can mate with the female and they can mate with their siblings and even with their own mother uh, without any loss of genetic fitness. Bed bugs are just a pain in the neck. But only at that point where you have a, mating, a breeding colony do you actually have an infestation. And that takes time. 
It takes at least three months, and probably six, before anybody notices that they've got a problem. Because almost all of the bugs, about 70% of them, are juveniles and are going to be really, really tiny. Hard to see and not feeding very much. It isn't until the bugs get to be adults that they are really taking significant amounts of blood. Okay, I already said you don't get bed bugs because you're dirty, you get bed bugs because you're unlucky. Uh, and sanitation doesn't have anything to do with bed bugs. You know, cockroaches, if you don't take out your trash or leave dishes in the sink, you're going to have a problem. Bed bugs don't care about that because the only thing they eat is us. Uh, clutter, however, like here, this can be a problem because there's a lot of places for bed bugs to hide making them hard to find and hard to get rid of. So decluttering can be part of bed bug treatment, but cleaning per se doesn't matter. It is also not true that bed bugs only affect poor people. Uh, anybody can get bed bugs. My cousin, who's a psychiatrist, lives in Westchester County, New York, not exactly the low rent district. Uh, he got bed bugs on a family vacation and it took their pest control company like six visits over four months to get rid of them. His wife was ready to just burn the whole house down. Um, but what is true is that bed bugs infest poor housing. They like places with lots of cracks and crevices. And in Philadelphia, we have a lot of that. Our old, all our old row homes were built about almost 100 years ago now in many cases. And they're very porous and the bugs can easily move from unit to unit. They also obviously go up and down in, in multifamily housing as well. Um, and <clears throat> so at this point, we have a lot of bed bugs in poor housing, and people that live in poor housing then become basically the, the, the transporters of, for the bugs. Um, and so, Rich people can afford to get rid of them, poor folk can, and until we get rid of, the, of this reservoir of bed bugs in, our poor, in poor housing, we're never going to get rid of the bugs. Oops. Okay, it's also not true that, quote, certain people are more willing to, to get bed bugs or live with them. Um, that's simply not true. Nobody wants to live with bed bugs. Uh, it is true. Though that, again, bed bugs hang out in poor housing, and uh, a lot of times uh, people that are in those homes don't have much choice about whether or not they're going to be there. And particularly if folks are undocumented, um, they're going to be reluctant to report problems, particularly these days. So they may tolerate the bugs, but nobody wants to live with them. It is true, though, that um, Places with high transiency or overpopulated are also more likely to have bed bugs. So in New York, they found that about 40% of apartments' bed bugs contain six or more people. And transient housing, uh, homeless shelters, drug and alcohol, uh, rehab cent centers, uh, nursing homes, all, all have tremendous problems with bed bugs on an ongoing basis. Oh, by the way, this is a electrical outlet. You can see the plate here, and this is all bed bug poop all over it, and the bugs simply climb out from around the, uh, the parts of the receptacle. So people really, 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 really don't like bed bugs. And they, like, they don't like them so much, they'll do almost anything to get rid of them. And so the Centers for Disease Control did a study a while ago now, it's published in 2011, and found over 100 people that they've injured themselves trying to get rid of this pest that basically is just a nuisance. The only medical consequence from a bed bug is the bite. But, uh, but they hurt themselves, seriously. One woman even managed to kill herself. Uh, she had a bunch of problems. But you don't want to hurt yourself to get rid of the bug. And one of the reasons that people will do this is that they don't read the label. They don't understand how to use the pesticide. The EPA knows that only 25% of people ever read the label in the first place. So if you don't read the label, you're probably not going to use it properly. 
it's probably going to be uh, ineffective, and you may end up hurting yourself. So here's some pictures. Here's the egg that I was talking about earlier, and you can see this is the thread on the mattress cover, and you can see the bed bug's about the same width as the, th as the thread, or the egg router. Um, these have all hatched. You can see the end of it is open. Okay. And so here's our bed bug feeding and making room for the new meal by getting rid of the old meal. And since bed bugs only eat blood, they're going to poop out more blood, digestive blood. And so that little ball of fecal blood is going to end up on the sheets or mattress, causing the stain. It's nasty reddish brown stains. It's sometimes the first uh, sign that people have realize they have the bug when they're changing their sheets and they start to see this and they get they wonder what it is. Uh, euphemistically, they're called rust stains, but they are in fact fecal stain. Uh, <clears throat> here we see a bunch of bed bugs, both adults and little guys, right along the edge of the mattress, along that braid that they often have around the edge of the mattress. That's a favorite place for the bed bugs, and they like to hang out in groups that are called aggregations. Here's a bunch of those cast skins, um, and I'll show you a picture of how this looks later. Um, it looks almost like sand, and it's a very distinct sign. Uh, and when we treat for bed bugs, we want to always clean up this mess uh, so that we can see if there's continuing activity in the future. You'll notice there's an egg here too. Females will sometimes lay eggs inside the cast skins, which will further help protect them. Sometimes little tiny nymphs will hide inside the skins shed by a larger one as well. All of which are reasons we want to get rid of that stuff. 